for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Annual Ladies Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday morning, February the 21st, 2015. Carly Ritchie is the speaker of this service teaching on Saul, Control, and the Orphan Spirit. Thank you. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Um, I want to start off with a prayer first. Yahweh, my Father in Heaven, thank you for being our Abba and our Daddy. You are holy, pure, just, righteous, and awesome. You are El Shaddai. You are Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior and Deliverer. You, Jesus, are Lord of all. I confess that we have all sinned, but as born-again daughters, we have been given the righteousness of God in you, Christ Jesus. Your name is the name of all names. In your name and under your authority, I bind the strong man over myself and everyone here. I bind mind and heart blinding spirits in Jesus' name. I bind death and dumb spirits in Jesus' name. I ask you, Father, to send your warring angels into the heavenlies and bind and cut off Apollo, Baal, Asherah, Jezebel, and her daughters, goddesses, and all fallen angels who would oppose this work. I repent for any pride amongst us and ask that you cut off Leviathan and all sons of pride. I bind all light spirits here in this atmosphere, as well as all witchcraft, sorcery, hexes, vexes, charms, and all ritual performed against this work in Jesus' name. I break the power of all this visualization and every soulish prayer released against anyone here today and their families and all that pertain to them. I ask you to bless anyone who has committed those sins against God's people with godly sorrow that leads to repentance in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the anointing that destroys yokes. And thank you, Jesus, that you became manifest here on earth to destroy the works of the devil. I bind and forbid all false coverings and apply the blood of Jesus to every person here, especially to any wounds that are not yet to be healed. Let Yahweh arise and the enemy be scattered as civil war is loosed in the demonic camp. Lord, I surrender this ministry to you and invite you, Lord Jesus, to get yourself some glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the teachings that the Lord has uh, showed me and given me um, are coming out of a raw place in me. Um, it's the things that he's dealing with me. I've been, my husband and me have been coming here since about 2004. So we've been around deliverance and doing deliverance for that long. But I have some, someone was put into my life that has triggered some things inside of me that I thought I had dealt with. And this one is um, daddy issues. <laughs> Um, I really thought I had been delivered from some things, and, and I have been delivered from a lot of things, but there is some healing that has to come, and it's in a deep, deep place. And I'm grateful and thankful that he's showing me, and I always hear Jerry, when, when someone attacks me in an unkind way, with unkind words and behaviors, I try to remember the things that Jerry said is, dealing with mother issues or daddy issues, you know, going back to that place because it's really an old wound that hasn't been healed. It's allowing this feeling inside of me to manifest. Because if there wasn't a wound, I don't believe there would be all the feelings and issues that I'm dealing with because of it. So the teaching today is Saul controlled in the orphan spirit. The controlling spirit personified in Saul has impacted many lives. It has violated many families, personally, emotionally, spiritually, and sometimes physically. 
and it's been affecting me physically. Almost everybody has control or been controlled. For some, the concept of a father evokes responses of anger, resentment, and rejection. Because they have not known a kind, caring, earthly father, they have a distorted view of the Heavenly Father's love. In many cases, these hurting individuals choose to simply deny or, or ignore his existence. Many people experience an emotional or mental block when they try to call God Father. Negative childhood experiences can hold us back in our own understanding of God as Father. Other people have difficulty relating to Him as Father because they have been taught all their lives to respect God and to fear Him. We are to respect God and fear Him, but those with the wrong understanding of this think that the Father is unreachable and does not desire a close relationship. They have a formal relationship with the Lord, but fail to understand the depth of the relationship that He desires with us. Many with Father issues have trouble knowing God is Daddy. They think it would be disrespectful to call our Heavenly Father Daddy. Let us take a look at the Word of God. Romans 8.15 For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, six. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his Son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Abba. The word Abba is an Aramaic word that would most closely be translated as Daddy. It was a common term that young children would use to address their fathers. It signifies the close, intimate relationship of a father to his child, as well as the childlike trust that a young child puts in her daddy. The closest Hebrew word, daddy or Abba, may not have expressed the comfort that comes from familiarity, but rather the comfort that comes from knowing that someone bigger and stronger is in control. <coughs> Do you understand that God is for you? And do you understand that He loves you? Do you understand that He will provide for you? Do you understand that He will protect you? Do you understand that He wants to be with you? Do you understand that you are the apple of His eye? It is life-changing to understand the full force of what it means to be able to call the one true God our Daddy and what it means to be joint heirs with Christ. Because of our relationship with God, we know He no longer deals with us as enemies. Instead, we can approach a holy God as our Heavenly Father with boldness and full assurance of faith. We have that confidence because of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit who bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and as children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. The benefits of being adopted children of God are many. Becoming a child of God is the highest privilege and honor that can be imagined. Because of it, we have a new relationship with God and a new standing before him. He deals with his children differently than he deals with the rest of the world. Being a child of God, adopted through faith in Christ Jesus, is the source of our hope, the security of our future, and the motivation to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Being children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords calls us to a higher standard, a different way of life, and a greater hope. As we come to understand the true nature of God as revealed in the Bible, we should be amazed that He not only allows us, but even encourages us to call Him all the Father. It is amazing that a holy and righteous God, who created and sustains all things, who was the only all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God, would allow sinful humans to call Him Daddy. As we come to understand who God really is and how sinful we are, the privilege of being able to call Him all the Father will take on a whole new meaning for us and help us understand God's amazing grace. Some of the most common hindrances to our comprehensions of the Father and Heart of God are emotional ones. 
unhealed damage from our own fathers can cause us to be hesitant to fully embrace our Father God as Daddy. Blocks from damage done by our earthly fathers prevent us from viewing God as a wonderful Father and Daddy. Thank you. A little girl with a loving, a good, loving earthly father loves her daddy. She is confident that he loves her. She knows if there is something she needs, he will help her. She knows he will protect her. She knows if she asks him for something she wants, that he will give it to her as long as it is a good thing. She knows her daddy will teach her things that she doesn't know. She knows her daddy wants to spend time with her. She trembles at daddy being upset with her, but always knows that daddy loves her and does what is best. She knows her daddy thinks that she is special. She will be confident in who she is because her daddy has given her his name. This is the relationship our Abba wants with his daughters. Emotional injury and wounds in the Bible are often referred to as a broken spirit. Proverbs 15:13. A merry heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of heart the spirit is broken. Proverbs 18:14. Proverbs the spirit of a man will nourish his sickness, but a wounded spirit he can bear. Let's take a look at examples in the Bible that can demonstrate to us a wounded person damaged by Saul. In First and Second Samuel, we read about Michael. Um, the story of Michael, King Saul's daughter, clearly illustrates the pain of a wounded, broken spirit. Her father was an impatient man. He was an insecure man. He also exploded in fits of anger. No doubt she was greatly affected by his wrath. Saul's jealousy towards David led him to devise a plot to kill David. As enticement, he offered one of his daughters as the prize to David if he could kill a hundred of Israel's enemies, the Philistines. Surely, thought Saul, David will be killed by the Philistines and I will be rid of him forever. Much to Saul's surprise, David succeeded and killed 200 Philistines. Saul awarded Michael as the prize that day, but David soon fled from another of Saul's fits of anger and left her behind. Several years later, he returned and found Michael married to another man. Against the will of Michael and her new husband, David demanded her return. She was eventually torn from the arms of her weeping husband and forcefully returned to David. It seems as if Michael was moved between the men in her life like a pawn in a chess match. Given her upbringing, abandonment by David, manipulation by her father, and being given to another man, it becomes easy to see why she acted bitterly towards David as he danced before the Lord in 2 Samuel chapter 6 as the ark was brought back into Jerusalem. She despised David in her heart. 2 Samuel 6.13 And it was so that when they bare the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen, oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Skipping over Second Samuel 6.20, we read, Then David returned to bless his household, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows, shamelessly and covereth himself. Second Samuel 6.21 And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore I will play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus and will be based in mine own sight and of the handmaid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. Michael's response flowed from an emotional wound that had festered into hatred. 
Forgiveness was the medicine that could have brought healing, but she chose not to grant it. Spiritual and physical barrenness afflicted her for the rest of her life. We don't have to end up like she did. Because of his father's heart, God longs to renew and restore us through the healing power of his love. Let's take a look at the definition of heart. One's innermost being, the essential part. The Father heart of God describes that foundational element that characterizes who he is. The scriptures describe him as merciful, forgiving, kind, and loving. God the Father looks like his son. Jesus came to us to reveal the Father and to bring us to the Father. He intended for the family to be a setting in which his love was modeled. His desire is that children grow up feeling understood, loved, and accepted, even celebrated. Were you celebrated? Do you celebrate your children? Were you nurtured in a loving and secure environment? Did you and do you feel loved, wanted, important, valuable, and good about yourself? Unfortunately, many homes don't meet that ideal. Always remember that fathers and mothers are all broken brothers and sisters, some more so than others. We are never looking to blame humans. We are looking for reasons that the enemy is able to maintain lies in our lives, which results in negative behavior, sickness, etc. We will then forgive and release all judgment against people. Repent what we need to and tell the enemy to leave in Jesus' name. People have suffered rejection and hurt from their family and have had no loving, godly father figures with whom to identify. These experiences have kept many of us from knowing God as He really is. Many are hindered from enjoying true intimacy with the Lord. Many of God's children are hindered by the Saul spirit. The Saul syndrome leads to alienation from God's people, from God and people. A few of the characteristics that often appear in daily life with the Saul syndrome. Withdrawal and isolation. <clears throat> this leads people to cut themselves off from other people. Withdrawal can be a way of covering up and justifying the refusal to forgive those who have hurt us. Possessiveness. The mentality of my ministry, my group, my opinion, my job, my place in the church. Control of other people's lives. This behavior is selfish and stems from an attitude of unholy independence. This me first attitude is a sin that often manifests as us versus them mentality. It could lead to unholy judgment towards all who have a differing opinion and cause splits in families, factions in church, and all over strife. Manipulation, which means to control or play upon by artful, unfair, or insidious means, especially to one's own advantage. Psychological manipulation is a type of social influence that aims to change the perception or behavior of others through underhanded, deceptive, or even abusive tactics. Successful manipulators are known for the following. Concealing aggressive intentions and behaviors, knowing the psychological vulnerabilities of the victim to determine what tactics are likely to be the most effective. Having a sufficient level of ruthlessness to have no qualms about causing harm to the victim if necessary. And teachable. This causes people to be close to other people, to refuse to accept correction, instruction, and to become hardened. Critical and judgmental, slander and judging the motives of others in an unholy manner. Impatient, refusing to wait for others who don't agree or understand like they perceive. Demanding they get their own way. No patience for others' viewpoints. Distrust accuses others of not trusting. This is really a projection of their own mistrust. Disloyalty, ingratitude, this attitude which is really towards God is one in which they focus on what they think should be done 
for them and not how much has already been done. Unhealthy idealism, methods, standards, and programs become more important than people, more important than unity or correct attitude. People with a soul spirit might be religious and even have the word of the Lord at times. Unlike David, we do not see Saul seeking the Lord except when he was desperate. He sought God through Samuel. After his disobedience to God in the matter of the Amalekites in 1 Samuel 15, when he was told to completely destroy them as well as their animals, he did not do he did not do it and was confronted by Samuel, God's prophet. He first blamed the people. He then said he kept the animals to make sacrifice unto the Lord. At this point, Samuel said, For rebellion is, is as of the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is of iniquity and idol worship. Because you have rejected the word of Jehovah, he has also rejected you from being king. Saul then admits he has sinned and makes the following statement. 1 Samuel 15:30. <clears throat> then he said, I have sinned. Please honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, and I shall worship Jehovah your God. Look at how he was concerned about the elders and the people, consumed with fear of man and not truly repentant. The most telling part, though, is how he said to Samuel, And I shall worship Jehovah your God, not my God or our God, but your God. Yet the same Saul in 1 Samuel 19.23-24 through 24 prophesied, Hear the word. Saul left for Ramah, but as he walked along, the Spirit of God took control of him, and he started prophesying. Then when he reached Prophet's village, he stripped off his clothes and prophesied in front of Samuel. He dropped to the ground and lay there naked all day and night. That's how the saying started. Is Saul now a prophet? A soul controlling spirit will have a religious spirit but lacking in relationship. Believes that the end justifies the means, blames others. Can be rebellious, stubborn, arrogant, and proud. Operates in rebellion, which is like witchcraft. Stubbornness as iniquity, even making God into his own image. Saul is remorseful, but does not truly repent. Saul controlled by fear, intimidation, emotional manipulation, shame, put down, punishment, rejection, or failure. Even Samuel, a mighty prophet of God, was scared of Saul. In 1 Samuel 16:2, we see the following: as Samuel had been told to go anoint a new man king. Samuel answered, "If I do that, Saul will find out and have me killed." Take a calf with you, the Lord replied. Tell everyone that you come to offer it as a sacrifice to me. Over and over, David had to flee Saul because Saul was going to kill him. Saul uses people who make him look good. David made Saul look good. He killed Goliath and won victory. Saul gave him a high position and David went to battle. Upon his return, what David did was celebrated as follows. First Samuel 18.7 They sang, Saul has killed a thousand enemies and David has killed ten thousand enemies. Saul could not handle this. First Samuel 18.8 This song made Saul very angry and he thought, They are saying that David has killed ten times more enemies than I ever did. Next, they want to make him king. Saul must win at all costs. He only feels important giving orders. He cannot celebrate the success and exaltation of others. Saul was angry at the attention given to David by the women singing about David. He was unholy, prideful, and intent on being number one. The Saul spirit brings inferiority and low self-esteem, causing suspicion. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but had left Saul. Sauls are afraid of people who they see have the anointing of God. People with Saul spirits can have outbursts of rage that are deadly. 
This anger is typically reserved for those closest to him in his own household. Out of nowhere, Saul, who was peaceful, would throw spears at David. They're afraid of other people's success. If this soft spirit cannot get rid of a perceived adversary, it will cause the person it is controlling. <coughs> it will cause the person it is controlling to withdraw, put up walls, <coughs> give the cold shelter of the silent treatment. Saul was a liar, deceiver, and a manipulator. Saul lacked integrity. He broke his promise. He broke his promise to David regarding his daughter. Saul was supposed to give David his oldest daughter, Mary, instead he married him to Michael. He promised Jonathan that he would not kill David, but tried to pin David to the wall with his spear. Pretending to love, he tried to kill. This kind of behavior can cause confusion in their victims. Saul's paranoia led to territory defense against David, who actually loved Saul and honored him as king. God be Lord. There can be an uproar everywhere they go. Everyone around Saul walked on eggshells. They don't have peace. They keep things stirred up. They are constantly at war. First Samuel 16:14. The spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord was terrifying him. Saul was at war with the Philistines for as long as he lived. Whenever he found a good warrior or a brave man, Saul made him join his army. Saul demands loyalty even when he is wrong. In 1 Samuel 20.30, we can see that Saul was upset with Jonathan because of his love for David. <clears throat> a person with the Saul spirit does not want their loved ones to have close friends. Any confrontation or disagreement they will receive is disloyalty. They have the all or none thinking of a dysfunctional family. They see people as either for them or against them. They will react to honest differences of opinion with anger or the silent treatment. They will not like you if you disagree with them. As they force people to choose sides, they cause division and disunity. Although Saul demanded total loyalty, he betrayed his own son Jonathan, David, and most of all, the Lord. In 1 Samuel 22, 18-21, Saul had 85 priests of the Lord killed. A person with a, a Saul spirit cannot affirm others and may dishonor them publicly. Saul even tried to kill his own son, Jonathan. Saul admits at one point that he has dealt wickedly with David. His behavior doesn't change and he became driven under compulsion to eliminate David by jealousy and insanity. In 1 Samuel 22, 7-8, he resorts to the flesh, soul power, manipulation, and schemes of man in order to keep his kingdom. <clears throat> Saul hears only what he wants to hear. In 1 Samuel 24, 9, David, Samuel, and the priest of Bimelech, all godly men tried to explain David's innocence. Saul would not hear. People with soft spirits can be perfectionists. Demanding and judgmental. They cannot receive love and therefore cannot give it. Their worth and identity are tied to roles and performance. How they are perceived is more important than who they are. Impossible standards are set. Often they cannot delegate ones who could do something right. Now that we learned about this soul spirit and its effects, I want to talk about a spirit that can be, re be received as a result of those damaged by the soul spirit. <clears throat> the orphan spirit. Many of God's people know their natural parents, but were in effect abandoned because of the behavior or neglect of these broken people. Of course, if you're one that never knew one or more of your parents, then this could apply to you as well. Perhaps you only rarely sense God's presence. This could be a result of being orphaned, even spiritually. 
A spiritual orphan is one who feels alone, one who feels like they do not have a place in the Father's heart. That place where they know that they are affirmed, protected, and provided for. That place that a child knows that they can receive the love their father has for them. They feel as if they do not belong. They are full of fear, anxiety, and insecurity. They cannot receive the father's love because they've been personally abused. Hurt, rejected, and wounded by their earthly fathers or those in authority over them. They can be dysfunctional because they lack the basic trust needed to have healthy relationships. They find themselves battling with fear, control issues, independence, and pride. They're not able to have intimate relationships because they feel unlovable and unloved. They don't feel like they deserve to be loved and comforted. Like the soul spirit, they operate out of insecurity and jealousy. They're jealous of the success of others and rejoice when others fail because it makes them feel better about themselves. They serve God in order to earn His love. They constantly strive in vain, attempt to be loved more because of their achievements in ministry or career. Many times, one with an orphan spirit will try to medicate the deep, eternal alienation through physical stimulation. This can include sex, alcohol, drugs, work, excessive ministry, etc. Anything to push down and push away their sense of alienation and loneliness and lack of self-worth. Often going from man to man, Relationship to relationship, trying to please men because they couldn't please their fathers. They can also be caught up in a life of narcissism and self-indulgence. A life that takes because they were not given to. A life driven by a need for perceived success and the affirmation that comes with it. The orphan spirit is self-protecting because they feel unsure about their position Uncovered and unprotected, they are often defensive and lash out first in order to protect themselves. The orphan spirit is deeply rooted in self-preservation. This occurs when you are obsessed with protecting things that you are afraid of losing. A child tends to resemble its parents. The orphans from Saul are also manipulating, controlling, how fits of rage, uncontrollable anger, can be overly competitive with the need to outdo others in order to feel important. You need to know that your Abba, Father, has always been there. He was there in your hurt and your disappointment, and He is here for you now. We were briefly loaned to human parents for a few years, and they were supposed to have showered us with love that would reflect God. That was God's intention. If your family fails that responsibility, you need to recognize that fact. You need to forgive them and go on to receive God's love. God is the only Father that can never fail. God is pure and holy and full of permanent love for those who receive Him. He has kept us alive with His mercy and grace and will never forsake us. Let go of the resentment of the failure of your own wounded parents who were just wounded kids who grew up and wounded their own kids. Instead, rejoice in the wonderful love of your Father God. God is not the cause of our problems. He is our only answer. Amen. Jesus Christ is the wounded one. He became wounded so that we could be healed. <coughs> He knows how our emotions can be injured. He was tempted in every way that we have been tempted. God the Father sent Jesus into the world to be our bridge between us and the healing love that flows from the Father. Look at what David did as he cried out to the Father in the following psalm. Psalm 6.1 O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. 
O Lord, heal me, for my bones are bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. <coughs> but thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul, and save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxes old because of my enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication, and the Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Our enemies are demons, not people. Psalm 52.1 A psalm of David when Doak the Edomite came and told Saul and said unto him, David is coming to the house of Ahimelech. Why boastest, why boastest thou thyself in mischief, almighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Thou lovest all devouring words of thy, thy deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made God, not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. This is a story that I found in this little book, and I just want to read part of it. It's from trauma to triumph, and it's about Esther. And so it was, when the king's command and decrees were heard, and when many young women were gathered at Shushan, the citadel, under the custody of Haggai, that Esther also was taken to the king's palace and to the care of Haggai, the custodian of the women, Esther 2 8. I'm intrigued by the passive tense in the phrase was taken in the verse above. In fact, this verb can mean taken by force. The word taken indicates to be fetched or acquired like property. The edict went out across the land and the king's guard was dispatched to gather the young girls. One minute they were at home with their families, the next minute they were whisked away to the palace and placed in a harem. Their lives were suddenly interrupted. The Persian Empire didn't care whether parents had other plans for their daughters. Remember, resistance is futile. You must be assimilated. It's easy to dismiss Esther as a lucky young woman. Well, we don't believe in luck. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> Who won the heart of the king. Most people view the story of Esther as one of romance, but I would like to I would like to offer a different viewpoint. Esther was a woman with a tragic background, like some of us. Both of her parents had died, and she was adopted and cared for by her cousin Mordecai, who advised her to keep her Jewish identity a secret. In fact, to call the process of collecting the women a competition is a little misleading since none of these contestants would be going home afterward. These women were slaves, whose lives were not considered their own. The king wished to add to his collection of living dolls. Those chosen would live in secluded splendor for the rest of their lives, even if they were only rarely taken out and played with. How is this romantic? This is more in line with modern-day sex trafficking than a beauty pageant. Imagine if you were going about your day and suddenly a government official comes and for all intents and purposes snatches you off the street. Why? Because the king who is known for killing people at a whim wants a new wife 
since he banished the first one. The previous Queen Vashti refused to show herself before the king and his guests after he requested her presence so that he, so that he could show off her beauty. Allow me to personalize this story. Esther, whose name to her family and kinsmen was Hadassah, was living at a time after the nation of Israel was conquered by Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who had then been conquered by the Persian Empire. While some of the Jews had been allowed to return to Jerusalem, Esther's family was a part of a group that decided to stay in Persia. Within their modest, tight-knit community, many of these families kept all the Jewish laws and traditions. This is part of what angered Haman and caused him to devise an evil plot to kill all the Jews in Persia. He did not like that they refused to assimilate into Persian culture. But as a young girl, Esther's concerns were far more innocent. She may have had dreams of being the mother of the Messiah, as many Jewish girls did. She was probably around the age of most that most Jewish girls got married, around 12 or 13. She was raised in the Jewish tradition and taught about the one true God. She was a member of the Benjamite tribe, so the law of Moses would have forbidden her to intermarry in other cultures, with other cultures. So when the edict went out and the soldiers came to collect Esther, she must have known her life was going to be very different. Being in line to marry the king of an opposing enemy nation was against everything she had been taught and raised to believe. I imagine that her plight was similar to that of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I can't begin to personalize the fear and despair this young girl must have felt being stripped away from her family, knowing that she would be forced into behaviors or practices that went against her beliefs about marriage and maintaining sexual purity. Virginity was a single woman's honor. In this place, this palace, all of that would be stolen and violated. Can you imagine her pleading with God as she was captured and rushed off to the house of women, begging him for miraculous deliverance? These occurrences in Esther's life were unfair. She was indeed a victim, but her story offers hope to all women who have faced traumatic, life-altering situations and trouble of any kind, that God can work through fears and dangers to accomplish your destiny. Have you ever felt your destiny has been taken away? Maybe when the opposition seems unbeatable, you may wonder if God cares. You may feel alone in the world with its suffering, injustice, and pain. You are not alone. God promises to never leave you or forsake you. Neither does he send harm to come upon his daughters. There is a very real enemy he seeks to steal, kill, and destroy on your hope. He doesn't want you to know or even fulfill your destiny. He will do this by causing you to blame God for the evil that he sends into your life. And let me go further than this. We have the power to choose as well. Do we continue to live as victims, or do we take on the righteousness and salvation of Christ and live as victors? What do you do when life becomes too tough? You may think, what can I do with all my trouble, troubles and baggage to help anyone else? How can my life, reputation, comfort, and future be used to rescue others. Great faith often emerges out of desperation and anguish, and people who perform brave deeds always battle fear and inadequacy. The hand of God is at work in the lives of his people. Just as he used the circumstances in Esther's life, he can also use the decisions and actions in your life to providentially work out his divine plans and purposes for you. We cannot see the end from the middle, and we must walk by faith, not by sight. The Lord will bring a greater good and perfect plan out of all the frustration we feel and out of all the evil we experience. When all is said and done, God uses even injustice to fulfill His promises to us. God is present in every scene and in the moment of every event until He ultimately and finally brings everything to a marvelous climax as He proves Himself Lord of His people. Trauma is defined as a very difficult or unpleasant experience that causes someone to have mental or emotional problems, usually for a long time. As you start to see yourself through God's eyes, you will begin to sense the depth of His love for you and limitless beauty He's placed within you. 
Although you have seen ashes before you see beauty, let him replace your emptiness and pain with his rich and deeply rooted love. Now, what do we do about all this? This could apply to you directly in the life you're living right now. You, at this moment, may be married to, working for, or in a church with leadership suffering from a soul syndrome. It could be situations that are not life-threatening, so that it would be better to see the enemy defeated and the captain set free by staying until you see the victory. So anyone who's being physically abused may need to get away and pray from afar. Remember, we've been wounded by wounded people. We can make the choices by the grace of our Lord to break the cycle. First of all, you need to repent of any sins you have in your life as a result of these spirits that worked against you. Any resentment, unforgiveness, unholy judgment is God leads. Let God be the judge. He will judge righteously and will not be hindered by your hanging on to your charges against another human being. By refusing to cast judgment and release mercy, you cancel judgment against yourself and receive mercy. Acknowledge to God that you have been hurt and are grieved by the relationship. Thank God that He has or will use what has happened to cause you to know Him in a greater measure as your husband and father, as you have drawn closer to Him in your wounded state. Stand on this promise, Joel 2.25, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. We have to persevere in prayer. This can be a long war, but if we don't quit, we win. In the story of Saul and David, after David was king, there was still resistance from the house of Saul. But as David persevered, the house of Saul grew weaker, and the house of David grew stronger and stronger. Set righteous boundaries. Do what Jesus did. Only the will of the Father. Ask the Father how much of the relationship do you continue in? Take lessons from David's response to Saul. Meet pride with humility. Turn away wrath with a soft answer. David would not wear Saul's armor, refusing to imitate him. David knew the Father intimately. David did not throw spirits back at Saul. David honored God's anointing even when Saul was not acting worthily. David spared Saul's life because of mercy and meekness while Saul tried to kill David. David let God vindicate him and let God deal with Saul. What if you discovered that you're the controller with the Saul spirit? Some of us may have been affected by the spirit of the child. Any of us could have inherited this spirit in the form of a generational curse. The first step in breaking the cycle of the Saul syndrome and all other demonic bondage is to admit where you are and what is being done by you or to you. Then we begin to unlearn the works in our lives that are not from the foot of the cross. Renounce all dark works. Forgive, be forgiven, and be set free. Many times, the enemy's works are hidden from us and are only revealed when we bind the enemy from interfering and ask the Lord to reveal the issues in Jesus' name. Many times we find deliverance happens when we just submit to the Lord and say, If it is in me, Lord, I want it out. Jesus, I thank you for authority over all. When in doubt, cast it out. <laughs> yeah. I thank you, Lord, that we have been given authority over all the power of the enemy to trample upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall harm us, according to Luke 10, 19. I thank you, Lord, that whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. So now, in the name of Jesus, I bind all interference with the deliverance to come. I bind the strong man over myself and every family represented here. I forbid all backlash and retaliation in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for the necessary angels needed for this battle today that are here to push back fallen angels and demons, powers and principalities, and all other enemy agents that would hinder this work today. I apply the blood of Jesus to everyone here, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. 
I thank you, Lord, that your sheep hear your voice and no other voice shall they hearken to. Holy Spirit, I invite you to have your way here today. Let us with the truth, Lord. It is the truth we know that sets us free. This battle is won, not by might, not by power, but by your Spirit, Lord Jesus. Yahweh, let your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name. Now, let us pray this together, whoever will. Please repeat after me. And let the Lord get glory as he delivers his daughters. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again from the dead. You redeemed me by your blood and I belong to you. I want to live for you. I confess all my sins, known and unknown. I am sorry for them all. I renounce them all. I forgive all others if I want you to forgive me. Forgive me now and cleanse me with your blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses me now from all sin. I come to you now as my deliverer. You know my special needs. The things that bind, things that, that torment, that, torment that, defile, that defile, that evil spirit, that evil spirit those unclean spirits. Unclean spirit. I, I claim the promise of your word that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I call upon you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver me and set me free. I renounce you, Satan, in all your works. I loose myself from you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to lead me right now in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive my ancestors and descendants and anyone else that has sinned against me. And I ask you to forgive and bless those that are still alive, alive. with all spiritual blessings. blessings. Forgive me my many sins, sins. and I forgive myself myself. for sins against my body. body. I break all curses, curses. hexes, Hexes. charms, Charms. spells, Spells. jinxes, Jinxes. psychic powers, powers. vexes, Vexes. effigy image assignments, locutions, Visualizations and demonic ties that bind. In Jesus' name. I break all demonic soul ties in Jesus' name. Caused by people. Operating in the soul spirit. By being orphaned. By witchcraft. Sorcery and bewitchment. As well as sexual sin in Jesus' name. I command all foreign souls to go where they belong. And thank you for restoring any fragmented parts of my mind, will, and emotions. Lord Jesus, I ask you to stir up any demons trying to hide in my subconscious mind. So they, would, so they would be forced to the light of your glory and be cast out in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for pleading our cause. And it is all asked and declared in Jesus' name. I renounce the soul spirit and all light spirits associated with Saul, including controller, controller, religious spirit, spirit, arrogant, arrogant, finger pointer, pointer, fear of life, fear of man, man, rebellious, rebellious, stubborn, 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 false false repentance, repentance, controlled by fear, controlled by by intimidation, manipulator, manipulator, backstabber, backstabber, jealousy, jealousy, pride, pride, 
Power hungry. Need to be seen. Need to be heard. Insecure. Suspicious. Paranoid. 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 Paranoid.
The rejection and fear. Let the fire of your love purge away the dross of an orphan spirit. Nothing can quench your love for me. Your word says you will not leave us as orphans. But you will come to us. Holy Spirit, come and pour the love of God into my heart. Holy Spirit, teach me how to receive the love of the Father. Empower me with the truth of your love. I don't want to just survive, but will thrive and enjoy the abundant life that you have for me. In Jesus' name, I renounce making big leaps for myself. All false covering. I renounce living in fear and shame. I will no longer hide myself from your presence. I humble myself, Lord. Your word says that unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will not bear fruit. I choose to die to self. I will not only be concerned with my best interests, but I will also use my authority to benefit the well-being of others. I shake myself free from passivity and indifference. I am a daughter of the King. I am not an orphan. I do not have to perform to receive your love. I receive the spirit of adoption. And I cry, Abba, Father. I lose myself from all insecurity and fear. I lose myself from self-preservation. Forgive me for being obsessed with trying to keep things out of tanks. From striving in unhealthy competition. No longer will I compete to survive. I have favor with the Lord. I find my security in the Lord. You are my heavenly Father. You provide for me. You protect me. And you want to be with me. You enjoy my company. You have given me a new name in the family of God. I will no longer try to save my life. But lose it in the arms of your love. I now break the generational curse of the orphan spirit. I forgive my ancestors in this matter. I renounce every spirit and all works of the flesh that would cause my bloodline to abandon children even spiritually, if not physically. I break unholy soul ties with everyone who's abandoned me. I command foreign souls to go back to where they belong and call my soul back to me covered in the blood of Jesus. And I thank the Lord for restoring my soul. I break the power of resentment towards them. I break the power of abandonment and rejection over my life. I break the power of selfishness, manipulation, and fear of abandonment. In Jesus' name, I command all spirits tied to the orphan spirit to attach to the orphan spirit and leave me now in Jesus' name. Orphan, abandonment, rejection, fear of abandonment, unwanted, unloved, unloving, unworthy, unholy competition, self-preservation, selfish, 
self sinner wounded, broken hearted, wounded heart, false covering, vain imagination, vanity, striving, shame, withdrawal, cold shoulder, silent treatment, obsession, fear of loss, disfavor, unprotected, disliked, performance, perfection, addiction, desperate to please a man, not valued, disrupted, arrested development, uncovered, false identity, need to stand down, desperate for attention, need to be seen, need to be heard, isolated, alienated, afraid of God, vagabond, misfit, wanderer, restless, infirmity, failure mechanism, go. Now, I'm going to call that again. Y'all will now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command these spirits to come out of these ladies in Jesus' name. Orphan, abandonment, rejection, fear, go in Jesus' name. Fear of abandonment, unwanted, unloved, unloving, unworthy, go in Jesus' name. Unholy competition, self-preservation, selfish, self-centered, go. Wounded, broken hearted, go in Jesus' name. Wounded heart, false covering, vain imagination, vanity, striving, go in Jesus' name. Shame, withdrawal, cold shoulder, silent treatment, leave in Jesus' name. Obsession, fear of loss, disfavored, leave God's girls in Jesus' name. Unprotected, dislike, performance, perfection, leave in Jesus' name. Addiction, go in Jesus' name. Desperate to please a man, leave. Not valued, disrupted, arrested development, leave in Jesus' name. Uncovered, false identity, need to stand out. Desperate for attention, go in Jesus' name. Need to be seen, need to be heard, leave in Jesus' name. Isolated, alienated, afraid of God, go in Jesus' name. Vagabond, misfit, wanderer, leave in Jesus' name. Restless, infirmity, failure mechanism, go in Jesus' name. Leave God's girl in Jesus' name. Do you all would pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to fill me up with your spirit, the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Daddy, most of all, I ask you to fill me with your love, your spirit, which would cause me to know how much I am loved, so that I can love others like you would have me love them. Thank you for my deliverance. I trust you to show me who I am really supposed to be and how valuable that you have made me. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.